Impulse is going to the moon. You heard that right. The company which is revolutionizing space tugs for Earth orbit is setting its sights on our celestial companion, with a lunar lander in the works from the father of SpaceX's Merlin engine. Tom Mueller founded Impulse Space to solve the problem of mobility in space, moving between orbits, delivering payloads directly into high energy orbits with a faster and cheaper solution. To date, they've developed Mira, with two missions already in space and upgrades on the way. They're also working on Helios, the launcher agnostic kickstage designed to loft over four tons to Geo, which Impulse says will transform the way payloads are delivered to such destinations, launching no earlier than late next year. But why stop at Earth orbit? There's an entire celestial body out there just waiting to be explored, so Impulse is developing a cost-effective solution to deliver three tons of payload to its surface. That's right, Impulse Space is developing a brand new lunar lander entirely in-house to address what Mueller calls a critical gap in lunar cargo delivery capabilities, specifically the half a ton to 13 ton range. And he's not wrong. Let's take a look at five landers you might have heard us talk about before. SpaceX's Starship Human Landing System, Blue Origin's Blue Moon Family, Firefly's Blue Ghost, and Astrobotics Griffin. Starship obviously rules the roost, with SpaceX being very clearly set on 100 tons for a very long time at this point. Blue Moon Mark II, in its one-way configuration, will be capable of 30 tons to the surface. Its precursor, Blue Moon Mark I, will be capable of three tons, the same as Impulse's new vehicle. Blue Ghost, being on the much smaller side of the spectrum, is capable of 240 kilograms to the lunar surface, while Griffin is aiming for 625 kilos. The vast spread in payload capacity between these vehicles shows the range in demand for payload delivery to the lunar surface, and Impulse's plan slots right in between the lighter and heavier landers, directly competing with Blue Origin's Blue Moon Mark I. Mueller argues that NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program is limited on those smaller deliveries, and the human landing system vehicles, while much larger, are still in development and a little ways away from actually landing on the surface of the moon. To deliver multi-ton payloads in the near term, you're going to have to turn to a company which has experience in building reliable spacecraft in a short time span, which Impulse just so happens to have. First of all, by making use of Helios, Impulse doesn't have to develop a new transfer stage. The lander will ride as a payload on Helios, which will carry it from low Earth orbit all the way through translunar injection to lunar orbit. Tom Mueller also made sure to point out that this design doesn't require in-space refueling, which is another similarity shared with Blue Moon Mark I. It will come as absolutely no surprise whatsoever to learn that Impulse has already started active development on the engine for their lunar lander. I mean, propulsion is kind of what their founder is famous for, after all. To further decrease risk, this yet-to-be-named engine will run on the same nitrous and ethane bipropellant used on Mira's safe thrusters, which, as previously mentioned, have been proven on two flights to date. Although hazardous, nitrous and ethane bipropellant is a much less toxic alternative to hypergolic propellant, making it safer for ground teams to handle, and it's just much less spicy overall. This combination also means that there is no risk of boil-off, something which is a concern for cryogenic propellants like liquid oxygen, liquid methane, and liquid hydrogen. Of course, with Helios being launch vehicle agnostic, that means the lander will be agnostic too. Numbers are available for the Falcon 9 and Terran R, but Impulse also lists Falcon Heavy, Starship, New Glenn, Vulcan, Eclipse, Ariane 6, H3, you get the idea. This is all well and good and all, but when will Impulse actually be launching this thing? Well, they're currently targeting 2028. That's right, two years from now. As I said earlier, Helios is still in development, and its maiden voyage is scheduled for no earlier than late 2026. Being the cruise stage of the lander, it's clearly an integral part that needs to be proven, and according to Tom Mueller, it'll be flying multiple missions per year by 2028. That year is currently scheduled to see two landings, meaning six tons of payload delivered to the lunar surface. Will they make it? Well, I guess to find out, you can click the subscribe button and come back in a couple of years' time. Until then, I've been Ryan Cadesen for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.